bulletin, 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 we could be just 10 seconds away from discovering dark matter. Well, guess what? We're less than that, because there's dark matter right there. There it is. That's dark matter. All right, done. Okay, my friends, shocker du jour. The Webb Telescope, the James Webb Te Space Telescope, $10 billion dollars up to 2021. Now, I don't know how much more they've added, but there's been spent $10 billion already. And what is it based on? It's based on the speed of light. The cons constancy, the consistent speed of light is the cornerstone of modern physics and underpins the telescope's ability to gather and interpret data accurately. All it's doing is saying that the speed of light never slows down because everything in space is a vacuum. They know that's not true. They know the speed of light slows down, and I can prove it, and, and NASA could prove it very easily, and I'll show you how. All right, you see what it says up here? How NASA's James Webb Telescope went nine billion over budget. It was only supposed to be one billion, ended up being 10 billion, and that's just the start. That's just to get it going. I think this was in 2021. You see this? What was the cost of the Webb Telescope so far? They're saying in 2021, December 2021, the total cost was approximately 10 billion. That's three, almost four years ago. Initial estimates were 500 million, then it went to 8.8 .8 billion, and now it's up over 10 billion. And that's, <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you right now, they got literally nothing for this money. And I'll show you why I can say that. Okay, here's the issue with the space telescope. They are trying to figure out how far the universe goes, how many light years away things are. And they base everything that the speed of light does not slow down in space because it's a total vacuum, which is known it's not correct whatsoever. It's absolutely, totally not correct. There's a ton of particles out there. It's called a quantum foam, and it's all of this stuff. That's not nothing. They think that's a vacuum? It's insanity, the way they talk. And they say, oh, the light never slows down, just keeps coming to the same speed, so we know that the universe now is accelerating away from us. No, it's just so far away now that the light has just almost slowed down to nothing. And, and it will slow down to absolutely nothing and just make particles in the in the space there is no vacuum in space none whatsoever anywhere in the entire universe it's impossible these particles are particles of light which i have shown light is particles it contains the dark matter which is the mass they say none of this is correct i say it's all correct what i'm saying and i can prove it's correct they can't prove anything they say, oh, it's photons are massless. They're this, they're that. There's a, and they go on and on and on. Not a single evidence, of a shred of evidence. I have all the evidence to prove it. This has been just one gigantic boondoggle waste of money. They, where they're looking, if they're looking through here, it's just slowed way down. If they're looking over here, it may not slow down quite so much. We are lost in space. We have no idea how far things are. Okay, this is one of the most interesting things about what Webb did find. The mysterious case of the little red dots. Well, the first time resulted in another dramatic unexpected discovery. I had no clue it was there. Early universe, they say, and then I don't agree with that. But it has an abundance of these little red dots, extremely compact red color sources of unknown origin. Don't forget, Red is down here in the spectrum. It's not energetic. It's, it doesn't have a lot of energy. All right? So they're seeing these little red dots. Not a lot of energy. Unknown or origin. They have no idea. And he say initially they were thought to be massive, super dense galaxies that shouldn't be possible. But detailed observations in the past year have revealed a combination of deeply puzzling and contradictory properties about these red compact, unknown origin source, little red dots. Well, what could they be? All right, in my opinion, those are mostly planetary formations. Planets are starting to form. Red is very, very low on the spectrum, very low energy. You know, it's not a lot of 
frequency, not a lot of ripped away because so because it's a small package that's starting to grow. So the red can go away fairly easily. Normally when they get pretty good size, it's just solid and everything is attracted very hard. But when they're tiny, these tiny little red holes, they're they're starting to ex absorb the blackness and they're growing black inside and glowing on the outside red. So the red is taken off, which is all they can see is red. They can't see a bright glowing star like a sun or anything because it's a, a planetary formation so small that the, the particles being held to the nucleus, the black hole in the center, are not held tightly. So they go flying off and they don't have to go hard. So they come out red. That's the difference between when you see colors up here and in the visible spectrum, they're fairly energetic. Up in here, they're really energetic. Down here, they're just, they're not held tightly to whatever they're being bounced off of. They're just sort of floating away. And that's what would happen in a very small package of black holeness. And there's going to be black holes everywhere. There, we have black holes inside of us. The Earth is literally a black hole internally. It is gravity. Black, the black part of all these particles is what sucks the white part. And everything has a white part until you separate it. So the black has more, the Earth has more black to it than it has white, as far as I can determine. And it wants more white. So all the particles of light come down and zoom right to Earth. Static, lightning, all the white, then those are white particles right to Earth. So the Earth has to be basically a black hole. You see this? It basically is the same as dipole electron flood theory. All the red is on the outside and the black goes to the center. And when it's a small, you know, like a planet just starting to grow, the red is, that's all you can see basically. And inside is the black hole which is attracting the red. And that's basically what you see right here. That's it. That's the black hole. Whoops. Attracting the red all around it. All right. The impossibly early galaxies. They have no idea where we are because light slows down. It's, it's silly to say that this is a vacuum. There is all kinds of fields and particles and dust and light itself is a particle. So everything they have done here is is not valid. It's, it's not a single thing is valid. They have no idea how fast light is going or slowing down. And it's slowing down, I would say, very rapidly. All right, I'm just going to go right through the whole slew of pictures so you see everything. This is how CERN and Fermilab do their particle collisions. They use huge things. They smash and they get all these big chunks of masses of things going everywhere. And they have no idea what they're seeing because they're starting with a big ball. Now, we don't use that. What we use is, uh, hold on. Hold on one second. What we use is light. And that is light accelerating. And that's light accelerating right there. So we know it can accelerate. And that's in the g gases in here. So that's way off of what Einstein said. And we know it can slow down. Everybody understands that. And it's slowing down in space because space is filled with the quantum foam. So that takes care of that. Now, we can see that the black and the white can separate from each other. The black is literally pushing the white ahead of it because it was so restricted that it created an explosion. Now, we can also see the light bouncing into all the particles in front of it. All right, so the light particle itself is forcing these these fields. This is a field. The particle is so so tiny, it's just tiny, but it creates a big field, and that's what affects these fields of all the gases in front of it. But it, this will slow down as it passes through these gases. But in this particular case, we're accelerating it because we use a venturi, and that's why we can see this field. It takes off like a rocket ship, and bow. Here you have fission, here you have fusion, here you have raw white electron energy. And what it fizzed and what fused? Well, here's what fizzed and fused. The same particles they see at Fermilab, CERN, Lawrence Livermore, all of them. The dark one is dark matter. That is dark matter. 
And the white one is the glowy part. It has no mass. It doesn't push anything. It just it makes things glow. That one pushes things. That's why this one's getting pumped up because it's pushing through the air, pushing other fields. This one's behind a black particle. Two dipoles back to back make the photon. Well, guess what we did? Take that photon and put it through a venturi. You can see those little white particles? That's what it's pushing through there in the front. It's pushing through those little white particles, forcing that to glow. And once it glows good and big, and then it flips, and then the one above, which is this one here, flops in the front, and this one flops around to the back. And they, they just keep doing that and spinning. That's how they do it. Now, this particle, we split, which means fission. Well, anytime you break something apart, it's fission. It's fizzes. It fissions. Right there is the fission. And the black ball, as shown by CERN, goes on its own as a, as a sterile muon. Electrons go into a shower, which they do. We showed exactly what they say. And uh, time to take this into consideration. And the, the, the things going through space slow down, light slows down. Everything they're doing in physics is wrong, basically. I'm telling you, they, they don't understand dipole electron flow theory. They don't understand gravity. They don't understand dark matter. They don't even understand heat. Heat is not just vibrating. Heat is particles entering an area that will accept them. And that area gets heavier. They're particles, not just vibration. If it was vibrating, it wouldn't get heavier. They get heavier as they absorb electrons and get hotter. The only thing that gets lighter is gases because they expand. But you would put something into a solid mass and heat it out hotter and hotter, it gets heavier and heavier. They have really everything wrong in physics right now. I mean, it's right top to bottom until you get above the subatomic level. Once you're into the atomic level, things seem to work pretty good. But they don't understand the vacuum of space. It's not a vacuum. It's saturated with particles. They don't. Okay, my friends. So, li literally everything they think is just not correct. They're thinking that there's no particles in space. Our outer atmosphere in the ionosphere is scrubbing through space so hard, it's almost 3,000 degrees out there. That's because of the scrub again the particles that John Glenn is looking at. That scrub is enormous. You know, probably below him or above him, wherever it was, probably below him was where that scrub was happening. And he was above that. Otherwise, he would, the capsule would burn up. You can't stay in that zone very long. So he had to be above it. But when he looked back, he could see the particles, and when he looked forward, he could see the particles. I'm going to leave it at that. There's enough. It's just, there's no way to deny that those particles are filling the vacuum of space, which is not a vacuum. So everything slows down. It's just absolutely insane not to understand that.